Welcome to the audio of the non-religious spirituality book, Happy Soul, Hungry Mind, a modern day parable about practical spirituality. Chapter 13, Happiness Mindset. Rishi caressed his forehead and said, We need to cultivate a mindset for happiness. If you are happy in the material world, it helps our spiritual progress. A troubled or disturbed mind hinders progress. I have three points to share. The first one is about expectations. We expect things to be perfect all the time. Well, that, that's normal. That's a mistake. It steals our happiness. I want my wife to always listen to me. I want my stocks to always go up. I want the traffic to disappear when I drive. I want my boss to give me a promotion on my timetable. We think, if only life would behave according to my wishes, then I'd be perfectly happy. Life's not going to be perfect. No, it's not. But if we change our expectations, life with all its problems can be happier. Our expectations determine our level of happiness and the quality of our life. But it's defeatist to have low expectations. Rishi shook his finger. Not low expectations, the right expectations. When you leave home for work, expect to find traffic. Whether you're upset or not, you'll still arrive at the same time. So relax, listen to music, and reach work in a good mood. Let life take its course. Don't expect a perfect life. Expect ups and downs. Be prepared to face the challenges and be ready to solve them with a smile. Don't be buried by the wave of life. Ride it. Travis swayed his hand. Ride the wave. Yes. <laughs> Religions advise us to selflessly help those who are suffering. When we help others, it calms us, gives us relief, making us realize our problems are smaller. Travis nodded. The second point is, we should never complain. People with great attitude don't complain. They work on making the best of their life. So many people have the right attitude. Cancer ravaging their bodies, tornadoes destroying their homes, economy destroying their livelihood, nothing phases them. They are the true heroes. They know how to accept the hard facts, let go of the past, and move forward. I'm in awe of them. Complaining drains us, makes us weaker. If you say, I'm not going to complain anymore, it will make you feel better. But man, it's sometimes it's hard not to complain. That is true. Many times, life feels unfair. We begrudge life and even other success. The problem is when we are thinking about what could have, should have been, we're not applying ourselves to improve our situation. Sometimes the situation's out of our control. No, uh, Travis, I agree with you. I, I know, I understand that. But we can still work on how we react and how we deal with those situations. Our reaction is always under our control. Travis turned philosopher. Can't control the circumstance. We can control our reaction. Rashid did a thumbs up. That's right. We wallow in self-pity. Why is this happening to me? We have self-doubt. I'm not good. I'll never be successful. I'm not lucky. I'm not smart. All these thoughts rob us of our potential and our happiness. But you know, like I do, some people are unlucky and incapable. Can't help it. Look at it this way, Travis. We all have been dealt with different cards. Someone else probably is smarter, luckier. We can't change that. But we must play the best game with the cards that we have been dealt. Man, my mother always said that. She is right, Travis. She is absolutely right. Complaining steals our happiness and makes us miserable. If we have a positive attitude, we'll have more success than we had coming our way. 
Makes sense. Stephen Hawking, the legendary physicist, had a debilitating disease for over 50 years. But you know what? He never complained. A quote from him says, If one is physically disabled, one cannot afford to be psychologically disabled as well. Well, not everyone can be strong like that. But I get your point. A military friend told me you never want to come back from battle with bullets left in your pocket. Rache beamed. Love that. I, I really love that. We may have different types of bullets, but we must fire every bullet. That's all we can do. Unfortunately, our thinking is so ingrained, we don't even realize it. Consider this example of an investor who's built a net worth of $25 million. Cool. Then the stock market crashes and he's only left with $12 million. How would he feel? Obviously horrible. Now, Travis, if I gave you $12 million, how would you feel? Ecstatic. Why is that? Well, it's a lot of money, Rishi. My worries would be over. Then why is that investor miserable? He still has $12 million. Well... You know, Travis, his mind would torture him because he doesn't have the $13 million. Yet he still has $12 million, something that could be a source of, how should I say this, heavenness for you. Travis got up and walked up to the window. Why is that, my friend? He has the money, yet he feels like a failure. Well, the reason is, you don't have an expectation of 25 million, so 12 million is a huge blessing. Being left with only 12 million is a debilitating curse for the investor. Rishi touched his forehead. Heaven and hell exist in our own minds. Well, if I lost 13 million, I'd go crazy. I'm just telling you that. I, I wouldn't sleep until I made it back. Travis sat down. I understand right expectations, but how striving for more a bad thing? That's the part I don't get. Trying to regain what you've lost, how's that bad? I, I don't get it. Trying to regain the 30 million isn't bad by itself. It's bad if we don't enjoy what we have and become miserable, focused on what we don't have or what we have lost. Striving for more, wanting to grow our healthy traits. But they are an absolute curse if they stop us from enjoying what we have. We take life for granted and miss out. Travis listened. Our lives, Travis, are a huge blessing. Yet we have little gratitude. You talked about rich kids. They have everything and yet they are always complaining. Caught like this hamster in the wheel, we don't relish life. You're frustrated because you're not achieving success fast enough. But if you ask my wannabe entrepreneur friends, they'll say they're envious of you. We all want a different life, more perfect than the one we have. If we have gratitude, it can be the foundation of our happiness mindset. If the Lord appeared, we wouldn't be able to ask for anything else because we have all the comforts. Travis's eyes flickered. I know what I'd ask. Rishi lifted his head slightly and Travis answered. Money? Hmm. Nathan. Travis's face contorted. I'll ask God to give me back my son. Travis... Rishi looked away and then back at Travis. Travis, please don't hold up your life because of Nathan. Please focus on what you have. Travis looked down. Focus on Cindy. Focus on yourself. That is the reality now. If you ignore yourself, if you ignore your wife, you're not relishing the life you have now. Travis flushed red. As carefully as he could, Rishi said. Travis, no one can bring Nathan back. But, but that doesn't mean you should stop enjoying life and punish yourself. 
I, I, I don't punish myself. Are you, are you working harder? Spending all the time at work to avoid? Travis squirmed, his body stiff and face lifeless. Rashid closed his eyes and took a few gentle breaths. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Rishi lightly gestured with both his palms in the air, as if he was caressing someone. Travis eased a little. Travis, my daughter got married in India. I must, I must choose to be happy, even though I miss her like crazy. It is a choice I must make every day. Happiness is a difficult and yet absolutely necessary choice we must make even in the most horrible of circumstances. Travis did not respond. Choosing to be happy is the third point I want to make. Is the positive transformation we need in our thoughts and lives. Travis tried to speak, but Rishi raised his hand gently. Travis, you deserve to be happy. Your son died, yet you must choose to be happy. And you can't be lackadaisical. Choosing to be happy isn't something you do casually. Choosing to be happy is something you must do with full active effort. Travis shook his head. But that's hard. I know, Travis. I, I know. I, I really, I know how hard that is. Paralysis crippled Stephen Hawking. But instead of focusing on his body, he focused on the fact he still had a super intelligent brain. You must make the choice to be happy for you and your wife's sake and for your team's sake. Travis stayed silent. Can I, may I offer you a suggestion? Sure, go ahead. Next time you see a boy who's Nathan's age, walk away. Is that because it'll torture me later? Yes. Yes, Travis, your mind likes Nathan's memories and I can understand that. So definitely do that in a measured manner by looking at his pictures and videos. But don't do that by looking at other people's kids. Travis thought about it. Is that so I don't begrudge others? Yes. You begin to ask again why you had to suffer. Why, Nathan? Save yourself that torture. Until you become stronger, be vigilant. Protect your mind and walk away. Being aware of how such a situation affects you will insulate you. I hear you, but I don't know how to fill the void. I can't stop missing him. Travis's eyes moistened. There was a there was a rich merchant in ancient India. It took a moment for Travis to reorient himself. He realized Rishi was sharing another story. He wiped his eyes. This merchant was afraid of thieves. So he put all his wealth, which was primarily in gold coins, in a pot and buried the pot under one of the trees in the backyard. Three years later, wanting to check on the pot, he dug up the area to find the pot was gone. Oh no. He had been robbed. He couldn't eat or sleep. His health suffered. Concerned, his wife asked a sage to counsel him. What did the sage say? Don't be addicted to gold? A smile broke on Travis's face. Yeah, Mr. Smarty Pants. No, the sage said, take a pot. Fill it with wooden coins and bury it in the same place. Why? That sounds silly. The merchant asked the same question. The sage said, just do it. So the merchant did. Three months later, the sage came back to check on the merchant. He had recuperated and was healthy. How? The merchant asked the sage, why am I feeling better? What did the sage say? The sage told the merchant, when he replaced the pot, even though the conscious mind realized it was full of wooden coins, his subconscious began to let go and relax. 
the new pot allowed the mind to break free of the vicious cycle of despair. Mm. The merchant shared, But O oh sage, in a way, I still feel I have the gold. Even though it's gone, when I sleep, some part of me is at peace having the pot there. The sage smiled and left. Sounds like the sage was a psychiatrist. We must understand, Travis, how the mind works. To save ourselves from the misery the mind causes. Rishi looked into Travis's eyes. Fill your void, Travis. Travis did not respond. Travis, you have many choices. You could have another child or adopt a child. Yeah, but we don't want any of those. Travis, give love another chance. You have love inside you, the love of a father. Another child could give you happiness. You're not replacing Nathan or betraying his memory. Please give yourself the permission to be happy again. Not getting a reaction from Travis, she paused. Okay, this may sound silly. Silly is fine. Get a giant teddy bear and place it in Nathan's room. Hug the bear every day. Rishi waited for a reaction. We put a life-size picture of Nathan in his room. Rishi grimaced. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's the best idea. It will continue to trouble your conscious mind every time you look at the picture. It'd be similar to the merchant putting gold-plated coins in his room. That probably won't provide peace. We want to calm the conscious mind and then go to work on the subconscious mind for full relief. A bear won't directly bring up memories and it might provide comfort. Travis squinted. Okay. The first few days, hugging the bear may be very emotional, similar to when the wound bursts, but the emotions will subside. And in a year, the bear will go back to being a bear. Travis closed his eyes. He imagined the bear and hugging it. It shook him a little, but it also had a comforting feeling to it. Travis opened his eyes. Mom's been telling me to have another child, but I've resisted. Cindy as well would like to have a baby. I'll, I'll think about it. But I'll definitely buy the bear. Yes, please, please do. Rishi walked up to Travis, squeezed his shoulder and patted him. Then he walked back and sat down. I really liked your points for transforming thoughts. It has helped me already. I'll transform how I think. And I'll cultivate a happiness mindset. I do need to be happier. Actually, I'm, I'm feeling a little happier already. I feel better. Wonderful. Wonderful, Travis. Wonderful. You deserve to be happier. We all do. Having the right expectations, never complaining, and making the conscious choice to be happy every day will make us all feel better. Then you'll feel happier and become more peaceful. Travis nodded. Thanks, I will. As we go through the spiritual path, you will see how it makes life better for us here in the material world and prepares us for spirituality. It's time to talk about upgrading our perspectives on life and this world. It will give us new maturity. End of chapter 13 Happiness Mindset Takeaways from this chapter we cannot control the circumstance. We can only control our reaction. Never come back from a battle with bullets left in your pocket. Do not take life for granted. Have gratitude. Do not complain. Do not begrudge, fix, or accept things. Always keep smiling. Strive for more, but do not be a slave to expectations. If you desire peace, focus your thoughts on what you have, not on what you do not have. 
Happiness is a choice, a choice that we must consciously make. You have the power to decide if you want to be happy. Be happier now. To transform your thoughts, live in the present, not in the future, and not in the past. Love your effort, not the outcome. Obsessing about outcomes will undermine your success and happiness. Enjoy, but moderate. Be a slave to nothing. The ability to engage at an arm's length without obsession and addiction is a powerful way to calm the mind. Be happy now. Do not complain about life. Instead, focus on making life better. Be happy now. Have the right expectations. Relish what you have. Do not dwell on what you don't have. Make the choice to be happy every day, even during difficult times. 